Drs. Michael and Adele McKinney, President and Co-Founders of Promise Christian University, have been equipping global Christian leaders since 1979. In 2002, Promise Christian University was established and has graduated leaders from 16 nations that are impacting their nations for Jesus Christ. We invite you to watch our weekly program, Study with Promise. Our faculty has more than 25 years experience in ministry and the marketplace. We want to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to become a student of God's Word and fulfill your divine destiny. He is faithful that promised. Hello, my name is Dr. Paul England, and I have the honor to welcome you today as one of the teachers at Promise Christian University to our new weekly program that is designed to help people and encourage people in every place to study God's book, the Holy Bible. We at Promise have titled our program Study with Promise because it represents who we are and what our mission is as a school. As a school, our vision and mission is to reach people everywhere with the message of God's truth that's found in the Bible. We believe God has given to us this mission because it is so vitally important to the lives of people everywhere and especially in the times that we live in. Why is teaching the Bible so vitally important, you may ask? Well, certainly there are many other subjects that we can teach that are important, like math, science, language, law, government. Well, the answer to that question is that none of these subjects can compare with the importance of teaching people the Bible. And the reason is because of the knowledge that the Bible gives to us is life-changing. The next question you might ask is, well, how is the Bible life-changing? Well, I want to give you five reasons or ways that the Bible changes our life. First of all, the Bible gives to us a true understanding of the one and only God who is set apart and sovereign above all things. We are told that the Bible has been inspired of God. Without the Bible, our knowledge and perception of God is very limited and often completely false. So often our knowledge of God is influenced by false teachers or by our own lack of knowledge and understanding. As a result, we end up following and worshiping false gods who have no power to help us or to do us good. We know the Bible can give to us an accurate knowledge and understanding of God because those who wrote the Bible were men who knew God and experienced God's power for themselves, who heard him speak to them his word. The Bible affirms to us that all scripture is inspired by God. In 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible tells us that the men who wrote the Bible were known as prophets, who spoke as God's spirit moved them to speak and to write the words that God gave to them. Listen to what the apostle Peter wrote in one of his letters that is included in the canon of scripture. He wrote that holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's 2 Peter 1.21. Therefore, we can be confident that when we study the Bible, we are learning the truth about God. Truth that will free us from any false perceptions that we have about God. The Bible is indeed an accurate record of God's word and of the works of God. The things that he has done to reveal himself to us, to reveal his divine nature and eternal attributes. 
so that we might know and worship him truly as the one and only sovereign God. Secondly, the Bible is life-changing because it inspires and gives us faith where we didn't have faith before. God tells us in his word that faith comes through hearing his word. This is why God has sent people to preach and to teach God's word, the Bible, just like we do here at Promise Christian. God's word gives us the faith we need to experience God's miraculous power in our life, to receive healing for our body and soul when we need healing, and receive answers for, from God to our most difficult problems that no one else can answer. When we learn the truth of God, we gain a sure foundation of faith that will stand every test and every challenge that we face in life. Many people live today in fear and doubt and uncertainty because they have no sure foundation for their beliefs. They have nothing to support their arguments when they try to persuade us of things that are not true. When they put people who do not know God's word, put their faith instead in things that are unreliable, whether it be riches or in rulers and governments, or in their own wisdom ability, they end up full of doubt and uncertainty that only increases their fears and anxiety. But with a foundation of faith, a foundation of truth to build our faith upon, we can face difficulties and overcome any force, forces that are beyond our control, things that come against us to threaten us or to overthrow our lives. But Jesus said that anyone who receives his words and does them will be a man who builds his house upon a rock. And whether, whenever a flood comes or should come to his house, his house will stand. When the devil came to Jesus to tempt him when he was in the wilderness, Jesus withstood that temptation because he stood on God's written, with, written word. Jesus said also that he would build his own house, the church, upon the foundation of the Apostle Peter's testimony concerning him that he is the Christ, the Son of God. And with that testimony, Jesus said, even the forces of hell would not prevail against his church. Which brings us to the next reason the Bible is life-changing. The Bible is life-changing because it is life-saving. The Apostle Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. It is when we know and believe God's truth concerning his son Jesus Christ, what he calls the good news of Jesus Christ, is that we are saved from God's judgment against us, brought upon us by sin, our own sin, Sin produces, is what produces condemnation that results in a sentence of death. God's word is life-saving when we learn that Jesus Christ died for those very sins of which we are guilty of. God's words delivers us from that sentence of death when we put our faith in the atoning work of Jesus Christ because with his shed blood, that he gave on the cross. Jesus wiped away our debt of sin to free us from that debt and give to us eternal life. Isn't that great news? That's why it's called good news. God's word is life-saving when we learn to do what God commands us to do. It teaches us to believe and to trust in God as our Savior to believe that God truly did send his only begotten son to be the savior of all men. It's in believing in Christ as our savior that we discover how great God's love is for us and that there is none like him who is so good and wise and sovereign over all 
who indeed is worthy of our highest praise and worship. The Apostle John recorded these words of God's love in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, the Bible is life-saving because it answers our most important need, the need to be saved from the condemnation and judgment that sin brings upon us. Paul wrote that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Another reason the Bible is life-changing is because it provides the answers we need to give us everlasting peace. People everywhere are searching for answers to life's most perplexing problems, answers that will free us from all of their fears and our fears and doubts. People are looking for answers concerning their existence and the meaning of our life and to all the injustice in the world. The Bible provides these answers to these kinds of questions to give us assurance and confidence in the midst of a world that is continually destroying itself. And finally, the Bible is life-changing because it prepares and equips us for every good work. By learning to do the things that God instructs us in the Bible, we are enabled to be successful in every work that God gives us to do. God's Word enables a man to be a good husband to his wife, a woman to be a good wife to her husband. It enables husbands and wives to be good parents to their children. It enables children to honor and obey their parents, to respect others, especially to honor and obey God. When we study the Bible, we gain the wisdom and knowledge that will enable us to do any and every good work that God calls us to do. As he, Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that all scripture is inspired of God and it is profitable for instruction, for correction, for reproof. And why? So that the man of God can be thoroughly prepared for every good work. In conclusion, you may ask, how do I know these things that are true, that make the Bible life-changing? Well, the answer is because I've experienced this life-changing power of God's Word for myself. It has changed me since I was a child when I first began learning the Bible. Through the things I've learned as well, I gained faith not only to trust God to love Him, but become equipped to be a pastor and a teacher today. In conclusion, I want to leave you with something my wife shared with me, our daughter posted on her Facebook page. She posted these words, the purpose of studying the Bible is not to just study, but to know more of God, to enter more into His presence and to align ourselves with His will. If it does not change us, then it is purely an academic study of no greater value than organic chemistry or anthropology. We study scripture not to become wise in our own eyes, but to allow our heart to beat with the same rhythm as the heart of God. And that when we know the heart of God, we cannot stay the same. I believe that came from Beth Moore's Bible study. So study with us, I promise we invite you, and may God bless your pursuit of the knowledge of his word. Uh, congratulations to all of the graduates uh, at the Promise Christian University for the year 2017. We are so excited that you have been so faithful to God and to the university in acquiring this accomplishment, which is really very, very outstanding. And you will be able to carry this accomplishment with you the rest of your life. And we are, again, so proud of you. Thank you so much for attending the university. And for PCU. Let it be a great year, a year in which many graduates will go into the world to preach the gospel and many more students will come to join us. I love PCU. We're doing what God wants to be done by training disciples and leaders for tomorrow and for today. God bless you as you graduate and may you have a wonderful life in Jesus. My name is Dr. Jackie Hornsby. I am the admissions director and assistant academic dean for Promise Christian University. 
and is indeed a pleasure as well as an honor to be here today to talk on a subject that is very, very important to me. I can feel the anointing all over this place today. My subject I like to talk about just briefly is reaching your goal with patience and endurance. I know when we hear that word patience and we hear that word endurance, it takes us back to the times when we have personally went through trials and tribulations dealing with patience and endurance. In the book of Philippians, the third chapter and the 14th verse, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. I like to put a little emphasis on the word press. In the Greek, it is the onno, which means to press on. In that particular verse, to press on means that we have to walk with endurance. Pressing means that you've been through something, you're going through something, or you're enduring a trial or tribulation. I can personally attest to how hard it is to press. But when I see Jesus pressing toward the cross for you and me, it gives me, it gives me, it gives me an opportunity to remember who to press for. I press toward the mark as Paul did. Now remember the story of Paul. When Paul was in prison, he may have been in prison in the physical, but in the spirit realm, he had a destination and he had a purpose. So his purpose was to press through any obstacle that he had. And how many of you know today that that is what we have to do, is press through the storms that daily, daily come in our direction. For Jesus is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent. He's all-knowing. So knowing that our press is for the good of God. For God reminds us every day that he shall supply all of our needs through his riches and glory. And I stand by the verse that says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every day we press. The prize. The prize of a Christian is the crown that is incorruptible in heaven, endurance, and in faith. Prayer and faith works together. When we're going for the prize and we endure the cost of the prize, prayer and faith works hand in hand. It's just like when you're going out to do a marathon. You look at your course, you understand what the prize is, and next comes your faith. In the book of Hebrews, 11 and 1, says faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Knowing that God is omnipresent, it takes our faith to endure the obstacle that God has set before us. When God sets us on an obstacle, he gives us the tools that we're needing to finish the race. The race is never won by the sweat, but to the one who endureth it to the end. So whom God chooses, God uses. So when we stay on course, we endure what God has in store for all of us. The high calling. God has called us to higher standards. Our mind, our mind thinking, God has called us to always be able to operate in kingdom principles. But what is kingdom principles? Turning the natural situation into a godly situation in the spirit realm. We have to learn to pray. We have to learn to have faith in God that it all deals with seasons and times. Sometimes we're ready to go out there and God says no. He's a wait a minute God. He's a no God. He's a yes God. So if we're listening to God, God would give us the directions that we're needing. My personal testimony is that patience was a very, very big obstacle, obstacle for me to endure. But as I grew in maturity, I learned that hearing the voice of God would always set my direction. It never meant that trials and tribulations would never come my direction. But what it meant was that God said that I will never leave you or forsake you. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Through God and through the gospel of Jesus Christ, when I think about what Christ has done for us, it gives me the unction to say, I can do it. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. 
for he shall supply all. It did not say some, but it said he shall supply all our needs through his riches and glory. So it may not seem like something that you thought you needed, but it's something that God has put in your direction. That's why we have to continue to press. That's why we have to continue to feel and to know the presence of God and knowing that I hear from God and knowing that God knows what is best for me. So changing my mind from a natural sense to a spiritual level, transforming my mind not to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of my mind. And by transforming means that I don't do the things I used to do. I don't think the way I used to, to think. I don't walk the same way I used to walk because being a transformed Christian means that my standards in life has to come higher. But how many of you know? New levels, there are new devils. So we have to continue to pray each and every day. We have to continue to strive in a spirit of excellence as Jesus had strived for you and I. When I think about him walking the Vela Della Rosa, walking that long Della, Vela Della Rosa for you and me, if I can only but say that my life is devoted to Christ Jesus. I can always say that I am transparent before God because he knows everything. He created us and he knows everything. For God has predestined already what our life should be, which way we're going, and the end. So all we have to do is stay on course, be focused, read our Bibles, listen to the word of God, and live by the word of God. How beautiful and how awesome it is to be living in kingdom principles. How beautiful and awesome it is just to know that if I press toward the mark of the high calling, that I always have Jesus by my side to direct me because he is the light of the world. He is the king of kings. How many of you know that he's the beginning and he's the end of our lives? Well, I thank God today for just predestining my life. I thank God for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, allowing me to impart in someone else's life as they continue to press. But never forget that as you're running this race, never forget to reach back and to bring someone else with you. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. When you hear that word shall, shall is a direct commandment from God that he shall do what he said that he was going to do. So again, I thank you and I encourage you today to live life to the fullest, always abiding in the word of God, knowing that your steps are ordered by the Lord, how beautiful it is to preach the gospel. Again, my closing remark to you today is, if I can help somebody, I know my living would not be in vain. God loves you, and so do I. Drs. Michael and Adele McKinney, president and co-founders of Promise Christian University, have been equipping global Christian leaders since 1979. In 2002, Promise Christian University was established and has graduated leaders from 16 nations that are impacting their nations for Jesus Christ. We invite you to watch our weekly program, Study with Promise. Our faculty has more than 25 years experience in ministry and the marketplace. We want to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to become a student of God's Word and fulfill your divine destiny. He is faithful that promised.